Is money printing set to explode? The short answer is yes. <laughs> I don't even think you understand the magnitude of how much it's going to explode. But what I find is most people really don't understand what money printing actually is. They really don't even understand money. But before you can figure out how the money printing is going to affect your financial future, you have to understand how it works. So let's figure that out right now, today. And I'm going to explain this to you in actually seven simple, fast steps. Step number one, how does it work when we actually spend or transfer money? And what I call it is it's just like Fugazi, just like Matthew McConaughey in that movie, Wolf of Wall Street. Editor, go ahead and throw up a clip so the viewer understands what I'm talking about. It's all a Fugazi. You know what a Fugazi is? No, Fugazi. It's a uh, fake. Yeah, Fugazi, Fugazi. It's a wazi, it's a woozy, it's a fairy dust. It doesn't exist. It's never landed. It is no matter. It's not on the elemental chart. It, it's not real, right? All right. All right. <laughs> That's right, quote unquote money in your bank account is just like Fugazi. It doesn't even exist, it's not there. It's like pixie dust. I'll show you what I'm talking about. When we're referring to money right now, I'm not referring to the classic definition that Mike Maloney as an example would use. Store of value, medium exchange, durable, divisible, portable, fungible unit of account. I'm not referring to that, I'm referring to just the average definition that the person walking on the street would give you. Oh, it's just the money in my bank account. Also, as we move on, we're going to reference a fantastic blog post from my partner in Rebel Capitalist Pro, Miss Lynn Alden. We're gonna reference that periodically. I would strongly suggest reading that when you get done watching this video. We'll put a link in the description below. It really dives into the nitty gritty of money printing, quantitative easing, and how it works with the consumer, the banks, the Fed, and the Treasury's balance sheet. The mistake most people make when they think this through is they see the banking system as this entity that's just holding on to something physical you have. As an example, you're going down to the local Wells Fargo to set up an account and you're taking a bag of silver or a bag of gold or maybe a box of green pieces of paper and you're just giving it to them and the average Joe thinks the bank just takes that physical stuff and puts it in a vault and then when you want to spend your physical stuff, it just goes from your vault to the bank of whomever you just paid. But that's not how it works at all. The only thing we're doing when we're transferring money or spending it with a business is we're just transferring IOUs back and forth. That's all it is. Let's check this out and I'll show you what I mean. We have the Fed, a bank A and bank B. Average Joe has an account with bank A and Home Depot has an account with bank B. The Fed's balance sheet has assets, liabilities, assets, treasuries, mortgage-backed securities, liabilities, bank reserves. And Bank A also has assets, liabilities. On the asset side of their balance sheet, those are the bank reserves, the same bank reserves that are a liability of the Fed. And on the liability side is the deposit account with Joe and the deposit account for Home Depot. But deposit account is a very misleading term. There's nothing in here. All that's there is pixie dust. <laughs> it's just like Fugazi, like Matthew McConaughey was talking about the Leonardo DiCaprio. There's nothing, it doesn't exist. It's, whoosh, whoosh. it's just ether, it's up in the air. All this really is, if it's anything, is just an IOU. Bank of America, or Bank A will say, is just saying, Joe, we owe you $100. Therefore, when you look at your deposit slip, it's not a record of how much money you have in your account. There's nothing in your account. It's just a record of how much money the bank owes you. So let's think this through. If Joe goes down to the local Home Depot 
to buy a hose and a rake, let's say, and he spends $50. He doesn't give Home Depot $50. All he does is he transfers 50 of his IOUs when he swipes his debit card. 50 IOUs go from his account to Home Depot's account. So what ends up happening is if we start with $100, well, let's say we start with $100, and this isn't $100 in Joe's account. There's nothing in there. Remember, it's Fugazi. The only thing that Joe has is $100 of IOUs. So he pays Home Depot and 50 of those IOUs get subtracted from his account and get added to Home Depot's account. So now Bank B owes Home Depot $550 instead of the original $500. So you see what's happened. No money has exchanged hands. The only thing that's gone back and forth are IOUs. IOUs from the banking system to entities, individuals, or businesses in the private sector. But let's keep in mind, these IOUs going back and forth are liabilities of the bank. Just like if you owe your friend $100, you have that liability. And that IOU to your friend would be an asset. So since Bank B has an additional $50 of liabilities, Bank A has to send them some form of asset to back up that $50. Because let's take it to an extreme. Let's say that Joe spent a trillion dollars with Home Depot. Well, those trillion dollars of IOUs or liabilities would go from bank A to bank B. And if all bank A did was transfer a trillion dollars of liabilities to bank B, bank B would be bust. They'd be insolvent, negative equity. So what has to happen is the asset has to go along with the liability for the bank's balance sheet. What is the asset? Those are the bank reserves. So let's walk through these balance sheets one more time so we are all on the same page. Bank A starts with $100 in bank reserves, $100 in, I hate to call them deposits because there's nothing there. We'll call them $100 in Fugazis. Bank B starts with $500 in bank reserves and $500 in Fugazis. After Joe spends the money with Home Depot, or basically gives Home Depot 50 IOUs, those IOUs go onto the balance sheet of Bank B. So now the balance sheets have 50 in bank reserves for Bank A, 50 in liabilities, Bank B has 550 in bank reserves, and 550 in Fugazis. The Fugazis got transferred, but which is a liability, and the bank reserves got transferred as well, those are the assets. So what happens to the Fed's balance sheet? The bank reserves that are assets of the banking system are liabilities of the Fed. We started with Bank A having $100 in bank reserves and Bank B having $500 in bank reserves. After the transaction, Bank A now has $50 in bank reserves and Bank B has $550. Why, you may ask? Because when the $50 in Fugazis went from Joe's account to Home Depot's account, Bank A had to transfer the equivalent amount of bank reserves from their account at the Fed to Bank B's account with the Fed. The liabilities transferred over, therefore the assets right here <laughs> had to transfer over as well. For the next segment in this seven part series, the last segment or the entire playlist, check out these links that are probably all around me and I will see you on the next video.